Oh, boy, what a weekend it's going to be here in the early line. We certainly have you covered. Donnie right side, Joe Ranieri. NBA action. Yes, it is fantastic. A doubleheader tonight, which we will get to, but the series previews are up. We know exactly the seed lines, who's playing and where they are playing. And, Joe, I got to tell you, I have really enjoyed the past two weeks in the NBA. Every single night, it felt like every line outside of the Celtics was up for grabs. Teams winning one night, teams losing one night. You're going from the two seed to the three seed to the four seed and back up higher. How did you handle the final two weeks in anticipation of the NBA playoffs? Oh, it uh, it very simply, uh, I avoided it like the plague. <laughs> uh, the, I absolutely listen. The whole point of handicapping all of the NBA all season is because you're you're handicapping because you think you have an edge. The last two weeks in the NBA season, I, you know, trying to figure out who's going to play, who's not going to play, what kind of effort are we going to get? Is it, it? It it was just a little bit overwhelming. Uh, a lot of dog winners, a lot of opportunities for teams. Uh, to kind of uh, get it going. I know Houston was profitable down the stretch, again, with nothing to lose. Uh, But there was uh, more question marks than we had definitive answers in the final two weeks. But the problem is, here we are with the playoffs, Donnie, and have you seen the list of injuries that we're dealing with here? Not not the six men. We're talking about superstars here that, uh, unfortunately, uh, couldn't make it in the final two weeks of the regular season and may not make it now. In the playoffs. Yeah, let's set the table for this series here, starting with the Bucks and the Pacers, because there's a lot of intrigue all the way around. We mm-hmm. know the Pacers. They love to get up and play with pace, no doubt about it. But in the NBA, we're taught to believe once you get to the playoffs, it's more of a half-court game here. The refs are going to swallow their whistles, and away you go. Let's just let the better team win and maybe the stronger team here. Let's set the table for this, because if we're looking at money line here, and this might be surprising to some people, the Pacers, minus 132. Milwaukee, plus 106 for the series. The spread line for the series. The Pacers, minus one and a half games at minus 105. If you take Milwaukee getting a game and a half, it's minus 115. But wait a second. One team's higher seed than the other and if we're looking at when these games will finish which means the order of the series in four games plus 350 in five games plus 280 six games plus 195 and seven games at a plus 240 price we have to let the people know if you didn't already know Giannis Antetokounmpo is down for the early part of the series now Joe what we don't know is that mean game one does that mean game two? Does that mean if the Bucs win game one, we could wait till game three or four to bring him back because of the urgency factor? What is your read on Giannis Antetokounmpo and that calf injury and how it could impact this series? Well, I, I think what it is, Donnie, more than anything else, is that it's a giant red flag on the Milwaukee Bucks because you and I both know it. This is not didn't just happen. He's been dealing with yep. this now for a while. And we all know that calf injuries do not go away. Uh, it, the only thing that truly helps it, Donnie, is, is rest. And we're talking significant rest because the next injury after this, just ask Kevin Durant, ask Kawhi Leonard, it, the Achilles goes, uh, and that's it. So you try to muscle through with this, and guess what? Then you end up losing them for uh, possibly a year. So I would be shocked, especially – uh, if, uh, if the Bucks can steal one early in the series, I think he gives it, uh, I think they'll try to keep him on the sideline as long as possible. But if they go down 1-0, 2-0, he's going to try to come back. And, and I don't know that that's going to be a great call. So if I was betting this series, I would bet it with the fact that Giannis probably not showing up for this series. Joe brings up a great point here, guys. And the reason being is, yes, you're worried about the calf. But you say, well, why would it affect anything else? If you've ever had an injury or watched injuries and how they happen Mm -hmm. in sports, if your calf is hurt, your body overcompensates here for that calf, which means, wait a second, he hurt his other calf. Now his left knee hurts. I thought it was his right knee at this point. Or he hurt his left hamstring. Now, why is his right hamstring flaring up? Because your body will overcompensate. And the key part is that as well, Joe, is, and you're right about this. You bring him back and he tweaks that calf again, it's over. He, even if you advance, he's probably not playing again in the playoffs here. And that's something to keep an eye on. Now, let's look at the team comparisons between these two, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Indiana Pacers. Almost identical records. You see the Milwaukee Bucks, 49 and 33. Points per game, 119. Points given up per game, 116. They'll give up some points, and the Pacers are known to be a great offensive team. 123 points per game and giving up 120 points. So we are expecting points, but also, you see that record for the Bucks, 49 and 33. And Joe, you might say to yourself, like, yeah, you know, that's a solid record. 
under Adrian Griffin, they might have the best record in the NBA and fought the Celtics all the way through. They hired Doc Rivers after firing Adrian Griffin, and everything goes in the toilet. Basically, a 500 team with Giannis or without Giannis heading into the playoffs here. There's not a lot of people around going, like, you know what? Coaching advantage with Doc Rivers here in the Bucks. Yeah, um, it, it, there's not. But the bigger the bigger problem here is that we've seen this throughout the season, right? And this is, there's a few of these, Donnie, and I think this is at the top of the list where the matchup is horrific for Milwaukee. There, there could not have been a worse matchup for the Bucks than the Pacers because Giannis is still looking for his basketball, by the way, after his, what, 64 points? If anybody's seen it, let him know. He's still a little bent uh, that somebody took his basketball after playing the Pacers there. But he dominated the Pacers, 54 points, 64 points. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a one-man yeah. wrecking machine. But you know what? That was all they had. Uh, that's all they had. And now without him, the Pacers ended up winning four or five. Why? Because Milwaukee is no good any place else there. They don't have anybody compensating for the points. Lillard's not the same guy. Uh, Lopez has fallen off defensively. Can't get a rebound against the smaller, more athletic guys on uh, on Indiana. And the Pacers have shown, you can drop 60 on us. Enjoy it, Giannis. We're still better than you everywhere else around the court. This could not have been a worse matchup for Milwaukee. And now they don't have the guy they can count on to score the points. They've got a slowly falling off a uh, cliff, Lillard, uh, who is not the same kind of player and is not the kind of player that would take advantage of a poor Pacers defense. Like, we just saw a play-in tournament game in Philadelphia. That was the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah. Nick Nurse is a very good and accomplished coach. Eric Spolstra might be the best coach in the NBA. So what you saw in that game was, well, the Heat don't really score all that much. How can we level the playing field? Let's throw out a crazy zone out here that the Sixers are going to struggle with in the first half. Nick Nurse goes to the half, yep. makes some changes here. Nick Batum comes in the third quarter, is Boston three-point shots all over the place. Those are great coaching decisions that were made, like tic-tac-toe. Now we take a look at Doc Rivers goes, okay, my best player is not going to play. I don't know when I'm getting back. How is he going to formulate a scheme against the Indiana Pacers yep. that's going to beat them? The reason I bring that up is good coach, bad coach, new coach, Griffin, and or Doc Rivers, look at the games this season that these two have played. Yep. They played five times. The Pacers won four of those five games here. So technically, the Pacers already have the Bucks number, and the Bucks don't have their best player. And you're taking a look at some of those games that you pointed out. Giannis was fantastic. He's a great player. Top three in the NBA, no matter which way you shake it out. So I don't know what scheme, or let's just say, Joe, what do you think is going to happen with Doc Rivers and his scheme with no Giannis here? Is it just Hey, Dan, bail us out like you're in Portland. Shoot 35 times. If you make your fair share, we'll be in this one. What else? What other choice is it? He's not going to scheme up some great defensive scheme uh, <laughs> in order to stop him. I mean, and and you're right, Donnie. The, the five games that we got to preview earlier this season, uh, it, it got better for Indiana. It got worse, the makeup of this team, for uh, the Milwaukee Bucks here. This is not a great defense by the Bucks. We know that. They allowed the fourth most two-point attempts uh, in the NBA this season. You've got an Indiana team who, by the way, way, even in those four games, Donnie, they didn't shoot well against the Milwaukee Bucks. But who's going to get in front of them? They can drive the lane all day long here, shoot it out, hit some threes, and they are going to dominate this series. Giannis is the great equalizer. But without Giannis, and even when he was in there dropping 50, 60 points again, um, they still didn't have enough pieces around him to get the job done. I don't think there's anything Doc Rivers can scheme that's going to slow down this Pacers team. The matchup doesn't work for the Bucs. It works even less if Giannis doesn't play. Exactly. And also, we're expecting like Giannis is just going to parachute in as if he was completely 100% yeah. healthy and playing every night. You're talking about a guy that's going to be missing weeks of action. And also, as we know... Maybe you're not so hesitant, or maybe you will be more hesitant on that calf than you normally would be, which would be tough mm -hmm. all the way around. Let's take a look at game number one, which is going to take place on Sunday night. Look at the line. FanDuel Sportsbook opened this game as a three-and-a-half point favorite to Milwaukee. News comes down that Giannis won't be available for the first part of the series. We know that's at least game number one. That line quickly flips over as a favorite now to the Pacers, Joe, minus one-and-a-half in a total that opened up at 237-and-a-half. That's now down to 232-and-a-half. From your perspective, 
And looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook at some of the statistics, 55% of the tickets coming in on the Pacers here. Do you agree with that line move? And are the Pacers the right play in game number one? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw this open up at as high as plus 250. Uh, and yeah. then, of course, the news on uh, on Giannis uh, kept coming. And now it's, look at where it is now, uh, Donnie. But the bottom line is, it's still affordable enough because if you think the it still applies, right? The Pacers are going to win this yeah. series. And not only are they going to win this series, Donnie, I would take them in a sweep. I would take them a game and a half, two and a half. I would just take them, uh, I would escalate the whole thing and just take them to go because without Giannis, this team is in trouble. And even with them, they still ain't winning the series. And I think that says a lot here about the state of the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, we saw Giannis go down with that calf injury. He's been out for quite some time already. But the mm-hmm. NBA, look, if you didn't make the play and you got an extra week here before their games actually started up going Sunday to Sunday, that helped out Giannis. And also the first round of the NBA playoffs takes an extremely long amount of time. So if there's any shining light on the Bucks, is you're getting maximum recovery time just so Giannis can come back. And also you're not going to play every other night. Those games are separated by at least two to three nights here to get that extra rest. We'll see how it plays out but not a good sign when your best player is not healthy to start the playoff. A guy that is healthy to start the playoffs, Joel Embiid. Bing bong, New York Knicks. What a series. We'll cover it next.